Hi there. Welcome, everybody. So glad you could join us. My name's Ian Witherspoon. I'm the host, and I am... Be Royal! Between Terminus. <laughs> Be Royal! Hi, get out of my shot. You get you you watch your mouth over there, young man. Normally we talk tigers at this time. We're gonna save that till the end. Stay tuned. <laughs> no, no, hi, how you doing? Who cares? <laughs> yeah. I don't. Ian happy. Ian happy, isn't he? Yeah, because you know, big news of the day comes from the hockey world. Patrick Sharp, a Dallas star. Him and Stephen Johns. Go to um, Dallas and Chicago. They sent Chicago to Trevor Daly and um, Ryan Garvin. Good Why is this important? It is important because it's going to make the stars a contender in the Western Conference this year. Because here is why. Chicago's in a salary cap situation. They still are in a salary cap situation. Look at a team like Detroit. You know what I mean? Detroit's under the cap. You're under the cap. Yeah, yeah. I'm under the cap. You know what I mean? So I can go get a player. This is a huge deal because Patrick Sharp's one of the best players in the NHL right now. All right. When we come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we got it. We got it. We got it. Oh. All right. Anyway. All right. <laughs> anyways, you're scaring me today, and I don't know why. But anyways, it's a, this is actually a interesting move from two division rivals. Mm -hmm. My take on it is is that this is going to help Dallas, but it's also going to hinder Dallas. Because if I recall, a couple weeks ago, you did not want Patrick Sharp to join the Stars because you feared that he was going to be too much of a distraction to your team. Remember, now you're changing sides because he joined Dallas? Who are you? Because Who? Patrick Sharp is going to make a Explain huge... Explain yourself. Patrick Sharp is going to make a huge impact with Dallas. Here's why. Why? Because you put him in the second line with Jason Spezza and Alex Hemsky. And then you have Jamie Benn, Tyler Sagan, and then you have um, Valerie Nichushkin. Those are two deadly lines in the NHL. You have In the Western Conference, you have to have at least two good lines to be solid in the league. You heard Anaheim's coach is assistant coach now at, in Colorado? Yeah, I heard about it. Aren't you happy about that? No, I'm not. You are happy with that. No, I'm not. The, all right, here's my point. My point is that I mean, if you look at this, this trade, I think, you know, I think, Sam, that this, you're kind of, you're kind of like, you know, you say something, but then you don't mean it. I think that you are, you're, you're showing, you're showing your true colors here, Sam. How am I showing my true colors? You're a, you're a, a flip-flopper. I am not a flip-flopper. You're a waffler. I am not a waffler. Yeah, you should be a politician. I, I am, I like to be a politician, but. I don't want Patrick Sharp. Two weeks later. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Patrick Sharp, welcome to town. Are you like, saying I'm a Jekyll and Hyde? I'm yes. saying you're George H.W. Bush. I'm not a George no H. W. Bush. No new taxes. Oh, well, we're going to have to raise taxes. That's you. Are you saying I'm a Republican? I say you should challenge Chris Barnett for the Orient Supervisor. I got Barnett. You're on! I'll do it! What? I'll challenge Chris Barnett! And I'll beat Chris Barnett. Well, I don't know about I that. I don't know about that, I Tim. About I really don't that. know about that. But you should go into politics. I am thinking of going into politics. Yeah, that's your calling. You're a flip-flopper. I take down Scott Walker. You can flip-flop better than Scott? No. Nah. Anyway, Sammy, if you look at if you look at this, why the importance of this trade in particular? Why what will this mean to the hockey world? Well, one, it means that um, you know, Chicago's in a salary cap crunch. You know what I mean? When you look at the cap this year, $71.6 million. Yes, I know that. But it's important to the hockey world because Patrick Sharp's one of those players that have done very well for Chicago. And now yes. he's going down to Dallas, which is going to mean, which means it's going to make it's going to make hockey very interesting in Dallas again. Because look at the league last year. Dallas was second in the league in goals scored last year. They still need a defenseman. They, but... I have a lot of faith in Jim Nell, who was a former Detroit Red Wing, by the way. 
you know. So, um, so I, I have faith in Jim Nell, what he's doing. I like where he's going with this team. I like what he's doing with Dallas. So you <laughs> sign Patrick Sharp. He's got two you, years left on his deal. <laughs> but you need defense help. Yeah. Yeah. You need defense help. Well, they got this guy. Why does this help you? They got this guy named Steven Johns who towards Texas in the AHL playoffs. A lot of people are high on this guy. He's a very good defenseman. Um, He's a stay-at-home defenseman. He could be an impact player. He's 6'4". And you look at what he – Dallas has a lot of young defensemen coming up. They're ready to go for the league. Um, I think that – You could arguably say the same point about the wings with the Griffins. (laughs) Ay, ay, ay. You know, if you look at a team like Detroit, who uses a lot of people from Grand Rapids, and um, you, yeah. and then you look at them, um, what Dallas is using from Texas. So it's pretty much it's pretty much the same situation. What Jim Nell is trying to use the Detroit recipe in Dallas, what he's doing right now it doesn't always work like that. Especially when it doesn't get cold in Dallas and you can't grow ice. Hey, you can grow ice in Frisco. And Austin, Texas. No. Yes, he can. You can't grow ice. Yes, he can. In Dallas. <laughs> yes, he can. Yeah. I think both Sam and Ian are in denial. About what? They both know where the where the number one hockey team is. It's the Colorado Avalanche. Flat out. Colorado hasn't been relevant since <laughs> our middle school graduation, when they got beat eight nothing. In O two oh seven, I'm sorry. Sure. Was that game seven? Was it game seven? Was that a game seven? I think it was. Yeah, remember that? That was cool. That, that was, was horrible. That was O two. That last, was horrible. The last time any team was relevant. Well, let's in see. Colorado. A team that's not relevant right now is the Detroit Tigers. They're not relevant. We'll, we'll talk get about to that. them. <laughs> we'll but a them. team that's definitely relevant this year, and it affects and affects us all, Ian. Is the Kansas City Royals. We'll get to that. Yep. If you say that name we'll get to that. one more time <laughs> before the third segment, you won't live to see that third segment. <laughs> I will not live. You will die. How would I not live? By my hand. Yeah, right. I get a lightsaber like they do in the Star Wars series. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll chop your I'll chop you off. Like e. Sometimes I wish you would. Yeah, whatever. Any other hockey things you wanted to get on? Touch on? Well, you is know. Is Chicago's dynasty coming to an end finally? Yes. Yes, it is. About time. About time. <laughs> because, um, you know, you lose Sharp. Canes and Thames are being paid $10.5 million this season each, which is a killing of the cap. That's too much money too for much two money players. For two players. That's a third of the payroll. Third almost. of the payroll. Yeah. Nearly. That's like $21 million per for two players. Yeah. It's terrible. That's good math. Yeah. But it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You know, would you offer, I wouldn't offer Pavel Dasuk and Henrik Zetterberg that same amount of money. No. No. Not do now. It. Not now. At they, they had to keep their stars. Right. And look what happened. <laughs> well, they I won think, three cups. I think what they did, you know, Dasuk and Zetterberg, is look at the team first and then pay their, and use their contracts to help them out. What? Lower the cap. How much you're making this year? Yeah. Helping the team out. Yeah. You think about that. That doesn't happen for Pavs and Zetterbury though, because they're past their prime. They're not where Taves and Kane are. No. <laughs> they Chicago had to pay those guys that money. Right. <laughs> and they got they got what they wanted. They got three cups. Still ten. Yeah. I think mission accomplished. Even if they're bad for the next five, ten. They're going to be bad. They won't be bad. They won't be bad. But they won't be bad. I think they're probably six, seven. They'll make the playoffs. They'll will make noise Saint, in the will playoffs. It be Saint, will it be St. Louis' time to shine? No. Will it be, no. Will it be Dallas? Anaheim? Will it Anaheim be? Anaheim solid. Could be Anaheim. You know who's coming? Edmonton. Bastards. Sorry, my language. All right. Well, I think that about wraps up this hockey segment. Now that the FCC really think, will be knocking on our door. <laughs> you really think the E-word is going, you really think the E-word's going to be bouncing back? I don't know. No. Well, they got enough number one picks. Turn your phone off before we do a show. We'll be right back with Between Terminas on ON TV. Dear God. This is, you know. Make a trip over to the Orion Arts Center to enjoy some family fun and fresh food at the 2015 Lake Orion Farmer's Market. 
Every Wednesday through October 21st from 2 to 7 p.m., local vendors will bring their farm fresh produce, baked goods, and more for the parents while the kids have some fun playing games or making crafts. Remember to come often as vendors change from week to week as new crops come into season. For more information on the Lake Orion Farmer's Market or to sign up as a vendor, visit LakeOrionFarmersMarket.com. Hello, I'm Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard. And I'm Farmer Detroit Red Wing Joe Coaster. We'd like to remind you to practice safe boating by knowing the laws regarding water safety. Please make sure you have the necessary safety equipment on board and be sure all of your equipment is working properly before leaving the dock. And the probability of being involved in a boating accident nearly doubles when alcohol is involved. Always check local weather conditions and if you notice darkening clouds, play it safe. Get off the water. Have a safe, enjoyable summer on the lake. Hello, welcome back to Between Terminas here on ONTV. So nice of you to join us. Now we're going to talk about how my childhood dreams have been squashed by recent allegations of 20 or so women across the United States <laughs> and through decades of going to comedy shows with Bill Cosby. <laughs> For I'm you. just kidding. We won't talk about Bill Cosby and his allegations. We should not. We should not. Probably, no. don't Probably not. Probably not. Also, the FCC is hot on Sammy's trail. Oh, Dang again. Dang it. Dang it. Again. Yep. Anyways, let's talk about something good. Good in the in golf. You know, we Tom talk Gillis. Golf, huh? Tom, yep. Gill Tom Gillis, the uh, 1986 Lake Orion alum, finished second at the John Deere Classic, losing to Jason Spieth. Jordan. Jordan. Jordan Spieth, sorry. <laughs> but, I mean, still very exciting to have one of your own finish in a very big tournament, a high tournament. And, I mean, what's your take about that? You know, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get Tom Gillis to come on BT. I think that would be what? absolutely perfect. You know what I mean? It would be perfect. It would be you perfect. reached out? I have thought about reaching out to Tom Gills. <laughs> I've thought about reaching out. But then again, he's then again he's eligible to be in the British Open this weekend. So maybe we'll get him next week. We could get him next week, you know what I mean? Depends on the schedule. Because like I'll bet you he won't have a problem coming on our show. You know what I mean? Does he still live in the area? He's an Oxford, Oxford resident. Oxford. Lives in Oxford. Well now. then he's not coming on this show. Why? Because he lives in Oxford. Well, you know, doesn't mean that Just kidding. Know. Just kidding. Yeah, we got Pat Kabuto to come here. He's an Orient man. Okay, I know he is. But, you know, I think what he did against Jordan Speed, I mean, like, took went to overtime. Went to two he had a play, great went Sunday. Lost the Sun Death playoff. He um, had a great Sunday. Had a great Sunday, but Speed had a great Saturday. He shot 61. You know he what I mean? He gets. He uh, gets. And then, of course, is there anyone that could beat Jordan Speed hanging in the British Open? Well, I he could have said Rory McIlroy, but he's hurt right now. Yes. But I just don't think there's anybody can beat could beat Jordan Spieth right now, the way he's playing. I mean, he could win this British Open tournament. If he wins the British Open, what do we talk? What, what's the conversation around Jordan Spieth? Tiger Woods. He could win. He could win. Um, he Doesn't that put him on par with Tiger? Puts him on par with Tiger Woods. Tiger has never won all four, correct? He has won all four in a in row. In one year? In one year, yes, yes he has. Two thousand. He won all four? Yes. He won all four of them. Just the one time? Yeah. I thought he won three. I did not know he won all no, four. No, he won all four. I'm not I much mean, of a golf. I mean, you look at what Tiger Woods okay. has done. I mean, Jordan Speed is on roll. As, as he is ready. He is on roll to just take over. He is the future of golf. Him and Rory McIlroy are going to have a huge rivalry in the next few years. It's going to be good. It's going to be. I think it's going to be good for golf. But isn't St. Andrews the ultimate uh, come back to earth course? Because oh yeah, of it's difficulty. Oh, it's very difficult because you got seventeen and sixteen. You got that circle on that. Well, that's gonna be very difficult. I mean, the weather. The who weather there the weather is brutal. Like. Who knows the weather? You know what I mean? Well, I'm more I'm more excited about <coughs> Tom Will Gillis. I'm really proud of him. You know, I'm really proud of how he's been able to. Forty six years old. Forty seven. Forty seven. It's very very hard to do. You know, forty seven years old. It's challenging. You know, you're at the end of your career. You gotta be proud. Lake Orion alum, you gotta be proud. Mm-hmm. Well, we got the, speaking of Lake Orion, we got Jeff Heath Camp. Oh yeah, the Jeff Heath Camp that took place on Wednesday. Did you go? No. We we got busy. So we got busy, and we um we were gonna go, but was we, it a one day only? Yeah, it, it was, was a, a Wednesday. Day it was a one day only. I heard that um a lot of great Lake Orion alums showed up. Um, 
played football experience, Robbie Lentz, um, Robert Aiello, um, you know, Joe Malkasian, you know. The whole crew. Mm-hmm. You look at that. All them guys, they, they just showed up. And like, you know, it's, it's important for to have a football Marcus camp like Stevenson, this, you yeah. know what I mean? It's important to have a football camp like this, you know what I mean? To get to know, you know what I mean? The present and the past, you know what I mean? Like uh, Lake Orion, I mean, with the Jeff Heat camp, I mean, like teaches the future kids, you know what I mean? What, how, how they do it down the in the college level and how they do it in the pro level. Um, well, it's also good for Jeff to give back, and Jeff is giving back to the Lake Orion community. Jeff is a um, is a Lake Orion alum, he, and it shows that he's he truly gives back to the Dragon community and. Um, also, the, one of the biggest reasons why they did the camp was to benefit the a new weight room that Lake Orion is is bringing in, and um, he was able to match the donation that um that they made. Um, and it, and overall, it's it's a win win situation because to what I've heard, it's going to be a yearly thing, and um you know it gives the kids a chance to come in and you know learn from one of the best that's ever played at Lake Orion in terms of you know went to college and then also went in the and also was playing in the NFL, not very many people get to play in the NFL. So it's a very exciting story for Lake Orion to have one of their own come in and play in the NFL and also give back to the community. And it's very exciting because he's truly a great kid, great guy, a um, lot of character. Um, his family is great, and it's um, truly an awesome thing. You look at what happened with the, um, with it's, you know, the history of Jeff Heath, the course, you know, everybody knows what he did. The 49-yard field goal yeah, in the high season. He was saying, took Lake Orion to their um, first state fi finals. I mean, like, um, experience. I mean, like, you know, he's done a lot for Lake Orion. He's done a lot he for had. the community. Um, he's done, um, he's helped out basketball camps. He's played basketball. He's also, he's also like, um, he went to Saginaw Valley, now plays for the Cowboys, of course, playing on special teams. You know, there's been some times he plays on defense. But um, what he did, what he did, what he did, I think it's very encouraging was, it helps the Lake Orion community. I mean, like, it gives them back. It gives them the opportunity for those, you know what I mean, to someday, one of those kids someday, to even go and follow his footsteps. And how does it, um, so Lake Orion didn't have a good year this past year. No. But getting the guys that you mentioned, those names you mentioned, all Lake Orion legends, mm -hmm. getting Heath to organize an, ev an event like this, does that help, uh, rally the boys to come back and say hey we got to get after it this year or what you know it's interesting it's an interesting question because when you look at this team this lake orient team last year they were four and five and um this is this is i mean it's very interesting to get the guys rallied but they do play a, a brutal schedule they got to play chippewa valley they got to play um they got to play oxford they got to play um you got to play at west bloomfield and then you got to play at clarkston and they got the crossover so it's a tough schedule I mean, to say for Lake Orion, but if, if last year's is not enough motivation for this group, True. I don't know what, if they don't make the playoffs for a second year, then, that, then there's going to be some questions, especially trying in that Lake Orion football program. Um, I think we're going to find out a lot of things in a couple weeks when you and I do the football preview show, Sam. Um, I think that the kids, to what I have heard, they're working very hard. Um, it's a new season. Um, it's a new, there, there has been some changes. Um, I'm very curious to hear what will happen in a couple weeks when Coach Bell comes on for the football preview show. It's, you know, it's going to be, I'm very curious. It's going to be very interesting. I hope it's a rallying year. cry. I hope it's a rallying cry for this team. But this team's going to have to win some big games. They're going to have to win the game against Chippewa Valley. Yep, They're going to have to win those two tough games at West Bloomington and at Clarkson. You know, for this team to be truly awesome. back, they have to win at least. They have to make the playoffs and go far in the playoffs. You know, this team, if they got to fix their defense. It's clearly this team has had problems defensively the last two seasons, and offensively last year it was not very good. You know, so this is a team that's got to fix everything on everything. And if this team can fix everything, then we could, then maybe, maybe this team can make the playoffs. You know what I mean? Jeff's games are on Sundays usually. Mm -hmm. yep. Do you think he'd be interested in playing linebacker Friday night? <laughs> that would it. help, wouldn't it? Doubt, Doubt it. Doubt it. Okay. Well, that was good stuff. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk Tigers here on Between Dehermines. Be royal.
Shut up. Hello, Lake Orion. It's Anthony Taramina, co-host of Between Taraminas. I want to let you know of a new show called History Now. In it, we're going to talk about global, national, and political events that occur in our lifetime. We're going to also have guests and also have co-hosts as well, and also plenty of surprises. Catch us on History Now here on ONTV. Hello, Lake Orion and Oakland County. This is Sammy Termina here, talking a new show here called OA Now. We're going to talk about sports from football to basketball to volleyball to track and field to soccer, cross country, etc. Here on OA Now on ON TV. Welcome back to Between Terraminas. <laughs> I'd like to take the time to start this third segment in a little bit of an unconventional manner by calling somebody out. I'd like to call out Pussycat Tigers fans. And why? Simple. Don't take my line. I was at the Rolling Stones concert on <laughs> Wednesday at Comerica Park. Get out of my shot. You, yeah, you royal Get fan. out of my shot. You royal fan. And it was a great show. The guys are over 70 years old and they still rock harder than anybody I know, even though I don't really know them. Uh, came to a certain point in the show where they played a few songs, you know, got acquainted with the audience, and Mick Jagger says, Comerica Park, home of the Tigers. Woo! There's some cheers. There's some cheers. Not a lot of cheers. I cheered. I cheered loud. Then Mick says, are we going to make it five years in a row? He, of course, is referring to the Tigers' American League Central dominance, where they have won the past four years. And he asks a simple question to rally the troops, to rally the people of Detroit, to show he knows a little bit of baseball. He says, are we going to make it five years in a row? Do you want to know what the crowd did? The crowd did nothing because they're a bunch of babies. They're, they're not full-blown Tigers fans. They're little pussycats. They're just little pussycats that are afraid of a little turbulence. Oh, the Royals are doing well. Yeah, they're a good ball club. But you know what? So are the gosh darn Tigers. The Tigers are 500. They're a good ball club. They're not a good ball club. They're scuffling. They're both pissed off. And Tigers fans are spoiled. Friday night. For the first time, there's a little bit of turbulence. They might not make the playoffs. They might have to sell. But Tigers fans can't even let out a cheer at the thought of making the playoffs and winning the American League Central for five years in a row. What kind of babies are we? We need to support the team. They have spent a lot of money. We've spent a lot of money seeing them, frankly. We've spent a lot of our time watching them. But now, at a simple concert, you can't let out a cheer to say, hey, I've got your back, team. I'm not giving up all hope in July. It's only July! <laughs> For the love of God, Pussycat Tiger fans, put on your big boy pants, and I'll see you in the second half. You know, yeah, that's a nice little comment. You know what I mean? I'll tell you why I'm Tigers aren't coming back. I'll tell you why the Tigers aren't coming back. I'll tell you why the Tigers aren't coming back. One, Kansas City is good. Two, Tigers are sellers at the deadline. Three, let's look at it here. Friday night describes everything. With this team, what happened That's to them horrible. Friday night is everything that happened to this team. They were up 6 nothing, 6 nothing, in the 8th inning. And how many runs did they give up? 8 runs. They gave up 1 They gave in one the in the 8th, and they gave 7 in the ninth. Are you kidding me? You tell me if this team is a playoff team. Heck no, this team's not a playoff team. Because I'll tell you why. Their bullpen's a disaster. They're, um... I mean, they can't even they can't even make plays with, with their pitching they, they can't pitch. They can't pitch. They can't. No, Rolander they pitched can't a great pitch. game. Rolander though. pitched a great game. David Price pitched an okay game the day before. He battled through eight innings. He was struggling, but he battled. Mm -hmm. Shane Green and Simon got to go. Yep, I agree with you. I told you a couple months ago. This trade, those two guys were a disaster waiting to happen. 
And look what happened now. They're a disaster waiting to happen. Shane Green was crying virtually during the game. He should be crying. He needs to go. He and Simon need to be in the bullpen. No. They need to be in the bullpen, and, and this, this team needs at least one starting pitcher. They need they they signed need, a tie Felice. They need a good starting pitcher. They just signed a tie Felice. They did. They are in severe crunch time right now. Yep. They're not out of it, but they are in severe crunch time, and they are not going to sell. Even Dombrowski recogn <laughs> recognizes it, that there, this, is a, this is a very dangerous time for the Tigers. You don't have your best player. I mean, you look at min the Minnesota series, Ian, and you have to agree that was a disastrous series. What happened in the Minnesota series is exactly what happened in 2013 ALCS in Boston. Mm -hmm. Boston came back when they should not have come back, and it affected them the whole rest of the series. Mm -hmm. The Tigers were going to go up 2-0 on Minnesota yes. in a very important series yes. and come back, they and they would have had a half game some more confidence. Yes. And they it let it affect them. The card, yes. They made errors in the field. Mm -hmm. They couldn't hit their way out of a paper bag on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Things have gotten bad. Very Things bad. have gotten bad. They're 500 right now. They're 500. They have a few days off. They'll start with a clean slate. Whew, they got some tough opponents, but they're a good team. They got a good offense. They have one of the best offenses in the league. Their defense is very improved from the last several years. Oh, Their agree. defense is improved. The problem is still the bullpen. The problem is the whole pitching staff. Aside from David Price, and who can Rue. you hand the ball to and completely trust right There's now? There's three guys I can trust right now. Can you trust Verlander? Yes. After No, I can't trust him right now. After one solid start, yeah, I can trust him. Animal Sanchez, I can trust him. You know, you kind, know? Of, <laughs> kind of, kind of. You know, but you can't trust, you can't trust your four and you can't trust your yeah. five. That's a huge problem. It is, and you can't. And you cannot trust your bullpen. You can't hand the ball. You know what I mean? Here's my thing with Soria. What happened with Soria was I'm not putting the, the day, blame on him. The day before, I mean, he was. This was his third straight game. You have to put responsibility on Osmus for even putting him. In, or no, Rondon deserves a lot the of blame. The blame goes Rondon. on Rondon because Rondon had an opportunity. Had, had it simply had to get three outs. He didn't do it. I so it forced it forced Osmus to get Soria in there. And then the, then the Twins kept scoring and scoring and scoring until that 3-1 bomb. Until that 3-1 bomb. I would be very... Uh, if I'm the pitch coach, I'd be I would trouble. be I would be very willing to trade Rondon if anybody would take him because he hasn't shown me in any of his time here that A, he can stay healthy, right. and B, that he prepares. I trade... Rumors are coming out that Rondon did not warm up properly, and that's on him. And then when you go out in a Major League Baseball game against a darn good team on a Friday night like the Twins, you're going to get lit up, and it's going to be one of the worst comebacks ever. It's devastating. It was truly devastating. devastating. And if I'm Justin Verlander, I'd be mad. I'm grabbing Rondon by the ear, and I'm saying, listen, Sonny, this ain't how we do things around here. The team leaders have got to step up because this is critical mass. This includes Verlander, this Victor Martinez. Yep. The only one guy that's doing pretty well this season is J.D. Martinez. Kinsler's doing okay, but J.D. Martinez is doing Kinsler okay. struggled. How many times have you been picked off at first? How many base running errors has Kinsler committed? A lot. But J.D. Martinez is doing very, very He's well. He's the only one that's doing well. I could say, um, yeah, yeah. Castellanos has picked it up a little bit. Uh, Iglesias has played well all yes, year. Yes, Iglesias. Ghost, good defensively, picked it up at the bat a little bit. The, the pieces are here. This is a good team. This is a high payroll. This is a good athletic team. Dombrowski met a lot of the done. issues. He improved the defense. Pitching is the problem. The bullpen. Pitching is the problem. We're going to see a lot about this team, though, in the second half. Uh -huh. Yeah. We're going to see a lot about Dombrowski. Has he got another magic trade in his hands? Mm -hmm. But then you got the, then you, you got the Royals have got to lose and lose bad, and then you got to have the Twins. The lose. division may be all and all and gone. Could except we remember what happened in '09, right? With the Tigers, mm -hmm. the Tigers are due to be get a little payback. Right. Anyways, we'll see what happens next Monday when we come back. I'm not giving up. Gosh I am. darn it. I am. Yeah, you're a pussycat tiger fan. No, I'm not a pussycat tiger. You're a pussycat yeah, tiger fan. Goodbye, you're a royal fan. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everyone. You are. Yeah, you're a royal fan.